in, in trial. We're not talking about just any trial here. Yeah. Talking about a president. How effective can the limiting instructions be for jurors? I think they're useless. I think they're completely useless, I'll be honest with you. I think it's a Band-Aid, but you can't fake that the injury was already done. You can't unring the bell. We're human beings. If somebody tells you, pretend I didn't just say that, okay, you're, you're not going to... There's no wipeout eraser in your mind that says, okay, I now have unheard that. And no limiting instruction will say, we know you heard X, Y, Z, but we don't want you to think about that when you're back there. You're going to follow these orders. Look, we have to be realistic about human nature. And I do think this is a part of our justice system that needs to be tweaked. Some things are antiquated. And this is one of those things. Uh, there needs to be a remedy when people disregard but, the but parameters. The, but the judge blamed you. Well, not me, but well, judge, <laughs> I'm not blame, on the case. The but. judge blamed Trump's attorneys. Well, let's remember what happened there. The judge said in the courtroom that these are the parameters. They had many sidebars that I can't speak to where they discussed those parameters. They thought the judge would enforce those parameters, said to you know, yep. control it. So they step back because when you're in front of a judge in general, let me just be clear, you have to do a dance. You cannot be inappropriate. You don't want to upset the judge and you're trying to do your job and be an advocate. It doesn't mean you constantly scream, yell and punch. Because he'd already said stop doing that. That's right. And right. then he comes out and says, well, hey, guess what? You should have objected more. Well, what are you to do in that scenario, right? And then we did make objections. And many of them, as we've seen in courtroom time after time again, are completely overruled. They're not sustained. Um, look, it, this is an art. It's not a science. When you're in a courtroom, no matter what the reporters are saying, you have to understand that as an attorney, it's a craft. You have to sit there. You have to listen. You have to read the room. You have to read the judge and the jury. If you constantly object and a judge is constantly saying you're overruled, how does that make you look to a jury? Right. There is a dance that you have to do, and you have to look at everything. So that back was a little bit of an unfair assumption, court. if you ask me. I'm sorry. Back in court tomorrow, are you there? I yes. will be there. Okay. Uh, first of all, um, if the defense is letting that come in, and they're not objecting, and the judge isn't overturning the objection. Seems to me uh, that would hurt on appeal. Uh, but, but on that, uh, but, but, but the, the, I think the bigger issue here is that this testimony, though really embarrassing to Donald Trump, um, was relevant. And, and, and it was relevant mm -hmm. because it was embarrassing to Donald Trump. Donald Trump, and again, I don't want to repeat it here, but Donald Trump doesn't want voters, let alone his wife, uh, to hear what he said to Stormy Daniels about the status of their marital relationship. Donald Trump doesn't want voters uh, any, more than he wants his daughter to hear what Donald Trump was saying, you know, making comparisons there. Um, so, so it seems to me that really goes to the heart. The, 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 as Mika said, and Willie said, this is sort of cringe worthy. It's not rated R testimony. It's just all very cringe worthy. But if you're running for president of the United States, you don't want those things to come out. Inside Donald Trump's prison cell, the surroundings are like any other small enclosed space. The walls are gray concrete and a narrow cot with a thin mattress is the only piece of furniture. A tiny metal sink and toilet combo sit in one corner. While a small barred window allows a sliver of natural light to filter in. The sound of clanking bars echoes through the air as guards patrol the hallway outside. What? What? What is... President Trump is 76 years old. He will die in federal prison. Trump spends his days pacing the limited floor space. The once powerful man now finds himself in a place of confinement. Before we go any further, day 13 in 50 seconds. The day began with Sally Franklin. She's the editor of a publishing house. She introduced into evidence certain excerpts of Donald Trump's books, wherein his own words, he says that he's a micromanager, he's a petty pincher, and he's really, really frugal. And he knows all things financial at Trump Organization and his own personal finances. And then they called Stormy Daniels. She met Donald Trump at a golf tournament. He invited her to dinner. She shows up. He's in satin pajamas. A little bit later, she comes out of the bathroom. He's on the bed in a t-shirt and boxers. They have a brief sexual encounter. But then immediately thereafter, he doesn't tell her, keep it quiet. I'm worried about my family finding out. In fact, he invites her to the other events and they, they stay in touch. 
but it's only when he announces his candidacy for president of the United States that he makes her sign an NDA and pays her $130,000. Now she talks about how her lawyer Keith Davidson worked with Michael Cohen to make that happen. Now the defense moved for a mistrial. They said that the jury heard all this prejudicial information that was irrelevant, but the judge said, nope, denial of that mistrial motion. Now the defense is cross-examining her. They're saying that she extorted money from Donald Trump and they're saying that she's been lying. We'll see her back in the stand on Thursday. You remember that old joke that used to go, lock, lock, who's there? No, me neither. But um, they are preparing for a special guest over at Rikers. So at President Trump's trial, they were talking about how he might end up in jail if he continues to violate these court orders. Uh, is Rikers prepared for that? Have you guys <laughs> had those discussions yet? Uh, and if so, what would that even look like? Uh, the, um, an, uh, our amazing commissioner, uh, uh, she is prepared for whatever comes uh, on Rikers Island, and I'm pretty sure she would be prepared to manage and deal with uh, the situation, as you see what's happening with Har Harvey Weinstein. Uh, we have to adjust, you know, in this business, particularly around law enforcement, we have to adjust whatever comes our way, but, you know, we don't want to deal with a hypothetical, uh, but uh, they're professionals. They'll be ready. Meanwhile, back at uh, Cable News Clickbait, who are they're addicted to Trump, literally 24-7. Uh, every little move, uh, they will do a full outside broadcast from his backside, if it's possible. Uh, however, there was a hot mic moment, which is, we'd love to know what went on here. Thoughts? Stormy Daniels, that the two of them don't sleep in the same room. And this goes back to one of the core questions of this case, which is, whether or not he was only trying to protect his family and marriage or whether he was also trying to protect his political viability. And before you answer that, I'm going to read one more uh, update from our reporters. Daniels says she told Trump of the magazine, someone should spank you with that. I'm sorry, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, listen, I mean, there's a there's a there's a simple answer. And remember, Dana, when the windows open and you hear clippity clop outside, it's a horse. It's not a zebra. So the obvious answer is the answer. And so he had two things going on in his mind. One, he didn't want the exposure personally as it related to his family life. And secondarily, he knew that this could be a big bomb that blew up on him. Uh, politically. The one thing and I will I say about this whole uh, hush money case is I don't think there's any particular uh, winners. Uh, it's just different degrees of uh, vileness. That's it. I mean, Michael Cohen is not, well, it wasn't a shining example, but um, something I've noticed, have you noticed the similarity between uh, Von Schitzenbad, sorry, that's got to be former guy's new name, and uh, Steve Bannon? They both look like, uh, hmm constipated this is something distasteful that they have in common fos ah oh. peter navarro in a prodding in a prison in florida for a misdemeanor and they will not allow matt matt gates who they understand is brilliant to go see him why he's too notorious for a misdemeanor he's too notorious for a misdemeanor he's too notorious he's a political prisoner and this is what they're attempting to do. Judge Janine Weinbox has got a problem with her memory. She really has. So I think we should, well, we haven't got time to do a GoFundMe. Instead, we'll just do a quick uh, help her with her past. Uh, she says, uh, what, do you remember what she said about Hillary Clinton? We cannot have a country led by a president subject to ongoing criminal investigations, potential indictments, and never ending hearings. We cannot have a president under that level of scrutiny that inevitably leads to even more questions and more investigation. So strange that she's not saying the same thing about, um, uh, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Von Schitz. Anyway, here's the thing. Um, you know, Trump loves a bad lawyer. Even he doesn't want to. Well, we don't know. Because I'm expecting her at some stage to rock up in court. Uh, Judge Shadi Piro, let's face it, thin line between her and Yabba Dabba Do. Would you want either of them defending you on a, I don't know, a traffic citation? Probably not. But Judge Panin, Panin, uh, Judge Shadeen does know a thing or two about crime. Just ask her ex-husband. Say to the defense, uh, to the prosecution, you are moving too close to reversible error here. Let's like trim the offenses here a little bit. But Mershon, and you know, I heard one person say on Fox, oh, he's a really experienced judge. He's a fool. He's not an experienced judge the way he's doing this. For him to say, 
please keep your answers short and listen to the questions while she is laying out what could be another prosecutable offense against Donald Trump that I'm not even going to mention. Um, he is allowing reversible error in. He should have said, I'm going to strike that testimony. There should have been a curative instruction right then and there on the spot. But instead, he says, well, I'll think about it, you know, make a request at the time of charge at the time of my charge. No. And then he sends the jury out and lays out the prosecutor for allowing this testimony in. This judge is either all in on convicting Trump, irrespective of whether it's going to be reversed. And I would bet my house this will be reversed by the Court of Appeals. Um, one of the things, though, that Greg, is that even if it is reversed, it wouldn't be until after the election. I've not used that line for a while. Find your nearest wall and bang your head against it. I used to use it quite a lot, so we use it right now. Uh, Chris, what's it? Is it Krusty the Clown? Krusty Gnome. Uh, the Dog Killer, the Puppy Killer. Uh, three Horses and a Goat as well, while we're talking about shooting and killing and being nasty to animals, uh, is still trying to promote her book and claim when you've lost news hoax... It's probably a sign you should just take a maybe a vacation for the next 10 years or so. I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. um, but going back to what you said a moment ago, maybe not lying mm -hmm. to the American people. And I think this is important to talk about because the book's called No Going Back. Mm -hmm. The truth on what's wrong with politics. And I think part of the problem with politics today is that politicians aren't honest with the it's American true. people. I so agree. if, Governor, if you asked me a month ago, Who's at the top of the list to run with Donald mm -hmm. Trump? I, I would have said your name. Mm -hmm. um, if you asked me that same question this morning, I don't even think you're on the list. Do you still think that you are in line to be Trump's vice president? No, it's up to, it's up to Donald Trump. He's the only person who will decide this. Yep, He's the, the only president. person who will decide. And I spoke, yes, I do speak to him. May I ask what yes. he said to you about yes. being no, vice president? I never, t I never tell anybody my personal conversations Did with the dog story president come up Trump. in your conversation I with I talk Trump? to President Trump all the time. About the dog? About a lot of things. And right now, I tell you what, he is being persecuted in a political hunt, witch hunt in this court case. So I'm proud of him dog? about how tough he is and how well he is doing. Did you bring up yes, the dog? Yes, enough, with Trump, Stuart. With Trump. Did you this bring interview up the dog is with ridiculous, Trump? what you were doing right now. I don't so you so. need to stop. It is. Okay. It is. We'll Let's stop. talk about some real topics that Americans um, care about. I'm afraid we're out of time. Oh, well, of course we but are. We do thank you for being with us. Right. I know I pressed hard, but that's what people are talking about no. to this day. Yeah. Governor Noah, thanks for joining us. Thank we you. appreciate it. We'll be back in just a moment with the opening bell. From the man that looks like he's almost about to burst a blood vessel, and that's just from uh, having a marshmallow. Uh, Chip Roy is really annoyed. Uh, the craziest thing, okay, about what he's about to say is this is the same party that pays their leader to play golf all day. But what we are doing is we're paying people not to work. We're paying kids to sit in their room, basement, whatever, playing Fortnite. Kids, they're in their 20s. or are we have I've never met anybody from Fox, have you? If you meet anybody from Fox, would you do me a favor and be totally serious about this? Would you ask them one question? Only one question. Uh, how do they not choke on their own irony? Uh, let me talk about hair as an example. I know I'm probably the last person to sit here and talk about hair. I I've got lots of experience, by the way. I can tell you the best way if you have a five-year-old to make them wash their hair in case they don't want to. But anyway, I distract. Laura Ingraham has got so much to talk about with regards to uh, Trump hush money court case and Stormy Daniels' uh, testimony, which is hmm, pretty wild. But instead, something we all missed. I mean, literally, the first thing that should slap the wrist, Tony, the first thing that should have come to mind is uh, the state of Stormy Daniels' hair whilst giving evidence under oath. Missed it. What was I doing? I missed such a such a intrinsic part. So if that's what we're into. All right, Carrie, other than um, how Ms. Daniels comported herself during this testimony, what else about her appearance uh, stood out to you and how that might impact the jury? Well, it was a bit odd because, you know, this is a criminal trial involving the former president of the United States. So each witness has dressed and presented themselves in, in a somewhat formal manner or a put together way. And just oddly, Stormy Daniels came in with her hair 
kind of pulled back in a clip with all kinds of hair coming out as if she hadn't brushed it, quite frankly, mm. and had what looked almost like a hoodie, but it was a coat. She was dressed very casually. And I started thinking, is this an intentional, you know, part of her strategy with the prosecution to show that she doesn't care or she's just some Flawed regular strategy. person who, yeah, mm. who, you know, is going to be here? But, you know, it's pretty, in pretty crazy that the, the wit, the intelligent and the team of researchers they have working at the Ingram show missed a key moment. Yes, Trump's uh, lawyers got hmm, called in front of the judge and uh, the judge said, would your client stop swearing? Because apparently he got particularly uh, upset over the spanking story, as you do. Paula Reed is out front live outside the New York courthouse to begin our coverage. And Paula, this was by far the most compelling and dramatic day of testimony so far. Yeah, Aaron, it's the most engaged we have seen the defendant throughout this case. But just a moment ago, we received the transcript from today that revealed a previously unknown exchange between the judge and the defense attorneys, where the judge told defense attorneys that he would not tolerate Trump's behavior during Daniel's testimony. He accused Trump of audibly cursing and shaking his head. Now, Aaron, this is significant because this is not something that we have seen so far in the criminal case, though it was the kind of behavior that Trump displayed in his civil litigation. But Judge Bershon making it clear today, this is not something he will tolerate in his courtroom. I think to make a point, to prove a point, put him in the clink. Oh, why not? Put him in the clink. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want this to sound like I'm doing wishful thinking. Yes. But which prison would be best? <laughs> I, I know I, which one. I, I, I would, I would give, I would give you Michael. Well, that's what, I, that's what I got. Number one. Clamity and sanity, Hannity. The same person that once had Michael Cohen as his lawyer. Yeah, keep quiet about that one. Don't you, Sean? But anyway, two things. Do you think he's ever looked in the mirror? Hmm. He doesn't have mirrors. He would see a fool if he did, or a man with, a, with no sense of humour, uh, a liar. Or do you think he's ever looked down the toilet pan after he's had a whatever it is he's done? Uh, if the answer is no, hardly a surprise, because he talked crap and, uh, well, the st if he was in a mirror, it would be like looking, as I've just described, a backside pouring out shit into a toilet. That tannity for you. What we'll say is this, Sean. Uh, when you have inconsistencies with any witness, it speaks volumes. When you pick people that are not credible, it speaks volumes. And Mershon should be embarrassed. His courtroom is a joke, a political circus. It's filled to the brim with clowns. This case is not about defamation. It is not about a woman. It is about a record-keeping category that was frankly correct, made in Trump Tower by the Trump Organization somebody in accounting who did nothing wrong, who's never spoken to President Trump, while President Trump was doing what? In the Oval Office running the country. And not care, they went ahead and put salacious information that was frankly false. We know that from, from words that were said prior to this trial. And now we're sitting here scratching our heads wondering where taxpayer dollars are going. Also, that I will say is this, Sean, uh, when you have inconsistencies with any witness, it speaks volumes. When you pick people that are not credible, it speaks volumes. And I to be the one who sets the example and to lead the world. Um, so I, my hope is that Mike Pence will endorse President Trump soon because it's critically important that we're unified and working together to make sure that we take back the White House. Right, but you didn't answer my question. Did Mike Pence do the right thing or the wrong thing on January I don't talk 6th. in hypothetical the law's changed. That situation will never happen again because the law's been changed. So I don't answer hypothetical questions. It's not hypothetical. I'm just it asking It is because it'll you... never happen again. But so in no, 2020, what that day. you know, looking back that day, I wasn't in the situation. I wasn't, didn't have the information he had. You know, I just think that Mike Pence today is making the wrong decision by not endorsing President Trump. All right.